first let us begin with a couple of minutes of a poem of his sung by a Pakistani classical singer uh, in uh, in 2021, I believe. Yes. Uh, so we will. And 11. First is 11. Thank you. Thank you. So we will try to play this video now for a couple of minutes. <laughs> Now go to the second one. Do you really need a lecture after such music? Huh? Does one does one really need a lecture after such music? Kapilji, it will not be a formal lecture. It will just be your own. Informal, yeah. Talking. Second one. Now play the second one. The second one. Let them listen to a few words. Let me tell you what this is about. You see, it's about uh, the spinning wheel, Charkha, spinning wheel. And uh, the spinning wheel is a symbol in uh, uh, Indian thought of uh, the cyclicity, cyclicity of time, of, that, uh, of things changing with time, you know, passage of time, passage of time. And... Uh, it is a it is a complex symbol because there there is a generally ladies ladies used to play on the charkha you know they would our weaving spinning and weaving was done by women you see women and uh, uh, it is you see it's very important the the, the fact that that a woman is the weaver in Indian life. And you know, weaver is, a, is an icon of God. Bhagwan bhi julaha hai. There are two, in Indian thought, two, two symbols for God. Weaver and potter. Kumbhakar. Kumbhakar or weaver. So, the women... They would, uh, one would spin, one woman will make those, you know, cotton ki naliya, jisko laga ke, you see, with one hand you play the charkha, the wheel, it rotates, it uh, is a wooden, made of wood. So it creates a kind of sound, you know, a kind of sound. Uh, uh, it's like, you know, mm, very soft on it. The, you see, one of them, and then the other the, the, the spindle. The spindle has another it's a sound. The two sounds, one is sounds like mm, you, tu. The other sounds like mm, me, I and you. So I and you, the Advaita, the Advaita concept of the Advaita of the Jeeva and the Brahman, the Jeev and the Brahman. So Charkha and the lady who weaves, the lady who makes this, 
this is the basic theme and it is ultimately about you know passage of time passage of time passage of time okay so listen to this then maybe we will talk a little about that poem yeah this is pathana khan this gentleman is pathana khan let's please start we will play now Go on for another few minutes, sir. It is worth ten lectures. <laughs> go on, go on, go on. Cut, 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 
cut, cut. You know, the last two lines that were sung, they are Buddha Hoyo Shah Husaina, Dandi Thira Paya, Uth Savere Tundan Lago, Sanjadiya Jogaya. The means, the lines mean, Shah Hussain, you have grown old. And now there are gaps in your teeth, as actually they are in mine also. Hmm? You have grown old, there are gaps in your teeth. You get up in the morning and start looking for those who had gone away last evening. You you get up in the morning and you start searching for those who went away last evening. Last evening. You see, as you grow old, as you grow in life past, you know, your life, human life is like a bird flying through the sky. You see? And as you fly, things are left behind. Left behind. And uh, the natural tendency to look back to search for what is lost, what is lost, you see. So it's a brilliant composition and the lexis, the vocabulary is so simple and so irreplaceable. You see, le moth just, in French, you know, there is an expression, le moth just, just that right word, just that right word. You cannot change the word. You, Of course, you can't change the bhav. The, the, music, the meaning, the emotion, but you can't change the word also. So this is like uh, in the laws of science, you cannot change the law and you cannot change the words in which the law is framed. So he's a great anyways. You see, the whole poem is a very beautiful poem, but I'll come to that if we have time. Otherwise, we will do with whatever we can. Now this, Shah Hussain, born around 1559 or so and died 1600. He was from Lahore and uh, his great-grandfather was a Dadda Rajput. They were converts. And uh, in those days, when uh, somebody converted, then uh, his social status went down. So Shah Hussain himself talks of himself as a person who is Nimana, who is the who is at the bottom, who is at the bottom. And uh, when you uh, when you are at the bottom, and at the same time you are not a worldly man, you are a fakir, a mendicant, a mendicant. Then you can imagine two things. One, his uh, alienation from the world and the worldly values. And secondly, his total freedom. A fakir, a mendicant is totally free. You see, even Guru Nanak has a, has a song which says that Vare mauj fakirandi na hirandi na pirandi. That what great joy belongs to the fakir, the mendicant. Huh? That joy cannot be matched either by a very beautiful queen or by a very, very religious peer saint. The saint and the queen cannot match the joy of freedom that a fakir has. Because the fakir, mendicant, his possessions are what? One, one uh, worn out blanket. That's all. He carries his worn out blanket. And uh, wears it when it is cold, sleeps on it at night, and moves it with it day and night. So, Shao Sen was basically belonged to, he had taken a you know, Diksha, and he had become an Islamic religious leader. But at the age of 36, he once, there was something in him, 
something in him which was meditative you know he believed in meditation thinking about things you know with your eyes shut and one night in the river ravi in winter ravi flows between amritsar and lahore you know he stood in the river ravi at midnight and shut his eyes and kept thinking and suddenly it came to his mind one ayat in quran there is one ayat in quran which says that life is all about playing khelna khed life the basic fact the basic truth of life is khelna 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 will mean play enactment joy you have draw joy suddenly he his whole mind changed he came out and he ceased to be a religious leader and he became a fakir there is a punjabi word malang 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 matlab kuch nahi chahiye nothing kuch hai nahi kuch lena nahi kuch dena nahi kuch mangna nahi you know nothing is nothing and he started wearing red clothes and these sufi malangs you know they used to dance they used to sing and they used to uh, uh, some some like like uh, our friend uh, shah husain they would also take intoxicants intoxicants drugs and in and they had a large following because they were as is characteristically the indian people i said it the other day also they have great reverence for a person who does not share the worldly values who does not go for possessions who give up everything for fakir after all mahatma buddha was also a fakir you see kuch nahi hai kuch nahi lena kuch nahi dena jana nahi pana nahi so he had a very large following very large following dara shiko the elder brother of aurangzeb who unfortunately could not become the king of india otherwise india's history would have been different dara shiko was a follower of shah hussain and uh, he used to call him shah hussain tadda tadda he was tadda was the caste his caste as a rajput he was a rajput shah hussain so anyways now let me uh, today try to be a little i would i would what i would actually like is not give a lecture but read his poems and paraphrase you know that will give you an idea but before that for the purpose of uh, this uh, literary landscape and uh, information that we need i will say a few things first that bhakti movement in india i have already told you it originated around 3rd 4th century and uh, this is a subject for another lecture how from the vedic vedic thought how vedic thought gradually permuted into bhakti movement through what stages what stages it started then and we have the first codified bhakti poetess the first first bhakti poet is a poetess that is andal from tamil nadu whom i called yeah last time proto meera she was a proto meera and this bhakti movement spanned entire india and it uh, uh, in, in every language literature literature of all indian languages the bhakti movement was immer it was immersed all literatures were immersed in the bhakti movement what was the characteristic of bhakti movement the character of bhakti movement the if you read about the indian literary theory poetics you find that there is a theory of rasa now rasa and uh, according to according to some thinkers the bhakti ras is also a ras bhakti ras but 
other other thinkers say that bhakti ras is nothing but shringar ras that is there is no difference between love and devotion love and devotion rati bhakti rati bhakti i was quite fascinated with this idea many many years ago and when i got an opportunity opportunity was given to me by birla foundation then i wrote a book in hindi bharat ki katha parampara mein rati bhakti rati bhakti the toggling of love and devotion the basic point is that when a love poet a poet who who is writes a love poem when he talks of his beloved or lover when she talks of his her lover or he talks of his love beloved then they portray the object of love like a god or a goddess like a god or a goddess you see so mira mira is very much in love with krishna very much in love with krishna but krishna you know you she portrays krishna not as a god but as a human being so this is also part of rati bhakti that you portray a human being as god and god as human being which is your object of love so mira for mira krishna is so handsome with his hair and his bansuri and you see in the same way many sufi poets if you listen to some sufi poetry abida begum etc they also if that your teeth are like uh, pearls and your eyes are like lotus flowers and your hair are like this so rati bhakti toggling of rati bhakti is the characteristic of bhakti movement bhakti poets they sing of god as a beautiful or a handsome human being and love love poets love poets sing of their object of love as a god or a goddess as a god or a goddess so this is a pan indian movement and as i said the other day it is still very much alive it is very much alive in uh, in the in the punjab area itself haryana bagpat area in rajasthan yeah last time i we we heard some rajasthani folk singers you know singing kabir so imagine kabir 13th 14th century and uh, in 21st and 22nd 2022 the rajasthani folk singer singing imagine shah husain writing in 1580 and in 2021 2021 a person from punjab singing him this is the living indian literature this is living indian literature and because and this is also oral oral visual literature you see as you saw you can uh, as you saw in the kabir songs you can see the people singing and you can see and hear hear pathana khan singing that singing that poem so there was a whole garland of bhakti poets now bhakti is of nine kinds as we all know aap sab jante hain suna zarur hua hai aap nau gin nahi payenge main bhi nahi gin pata isliye maine dobara check kiya there are nine kinds of bhakti shravan bhagwan ka naam sunna kirtan to sing to sing of god's qualities vandan vandan uska naam jap karna vandana karna uski dasya bhakti like a slave you surrender yourself sharanagati like vibhishana or dasya like hanuman you know you be submit submit archan offering flowers every day offering water like shabari shabari offering the bear bear to rama hai na archan archan sakya sakya bhav friendliness arjun and krishna you know arjun and krishna there was then atmanivedan is this in fact is sharnagati complete surrender of yourself to him yourself and in the 16th century around the time that's writing 
there was jeev goswami and roop goswami in vrindavan jeev goswami and roop goswami who talked of the prema bhakti you know bhakti by love prema bhakti or love as bhakti love as bhakti and uh, their uh, wonderful volume it is uh, when meera came from chitor to vrindavan vrindavan she wanted to meet she wanted to meet jeev goswami and jeev goswami sent a message to her that i i only meet i only meet men i do not meet women and meera sent a message back to him that i thought in vrindavan there was only one man that was krishna krishna then jeev goswami himself went to meet her to meet meera before she left vrindavan in search of krishna because she wanted to meet him become one with him like anda in the 6th century so then she went to to dwaraka and uh, in dwaraka in dwaraka she uh, when she went there at midnight she reached she walked lot of people followed her she reached dwaraka and it was midnight the gates were closed but then she was singing in a frenzy the bhajan and some of the words that uh, that meera uses in that song are that uh, uh, can you really she asked krishna can you really give me up she is not saying i cannot give you up she asks krishna can you really give me up kya tyag sakoge mujhko tyag sakoge and you know in her frenzy when uh, she reaches the crescendo of her madness madness then you know they say that the doors opened the vigra opened and krishna appeared and uh, she ran by that time her husband the king of chitor had also reached there he held try to held her hold her by sari but she ran and she collapsed but a light from her body body went and merged with the vigra in 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 dwarak uh i don't know last time i mentioned to you i will repeat if you find time go to go your google baba and uh, look for the film 1935 meera m e e r a in which subalakshmi the great subalakshmi you know she was if you have ever seen her she died about two years back very old she was a very celestial kind of person very divine and uh, she was about 23 or 24 when she played meera in that film meera and in the last song in the last song last prayer the, and you know the beauty of that film is that she is playing meera subalakshmi who is herself a devotee subalakshmi herself was a bhakt and she is playing meera and other bhakt and uh, uh, when you are immersed in the film you forget that you are looking at subalakshmi you feel it is actually meera and people say that uh, andal was reborn as meera and meera has been reborn as subalakshmi as subalakshmi to kabhi mauka milega to aap usko zarur dekhiyega it is a particularly the last part and uh, the whole film you need patience you know because now modern tastes are different you know who cares for bhakti now you do care for love but that love is a different kind of love not the kind of love which is also bhakti so tastes are different people may not have the patience to see that but i think if you can you should anyways uh, i am uh, getting uh, Uh, something if i can quickly get that i'll uh, show you something mm. documents no kapinji you wanted to read a few poems of no no so i'm 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 stopping i'm stopping uh 
I will acha then. So you see, I have given you some idea of this. Now, other features of bhakti poetry are that it is oral, performative. It is in the language of the people, ordinary language of the people, and its concerns. Its concerns. You know, when you listen to that today, just now, didn't you feel that music, poetry, philosophy, they are all interlinked. They are not different. You see, they integrate into a state, into a bhava, which is, you know, philosophical. When he says that you are searching for some people who left yesterday, the time has passed and all that. And the alapas of music and the words, words, Buddha, Hoyo, Shav, Sena. So the poetry, the music, and the philosophy, they all merge into one. And uh, all bhakti poetry of India expresses the Indian philosophy. Indian philosophy of transience and suffering. That basically human life is suffering. Mahatma Buddha said, Dukh is the only truth. And there is, Sukh is only absence of Dukh. Sukh is not affirmative. Sukh is absence of Dukh. So Dukh is the core. So in Indian worldview, suffering, human suffering, is the truth. And to, to liberate yourself from suffering, that is moksha. How do you get it? You get it by, 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 by bhakti, by devotion, by becoming one with God. And this is broadly, I again, another lecture is needed to show you how after the Mahabharat war, the, the things, the ideas had changed, how gradually Bhagavat dharma arose, and how you know, bhakti gradually evolved. As you know, we have three margas in Indian life, the jnana, karma, and bhakti. We have three possibilities. You can live a life by knowledge, you can live a life by action, or you can lead your life by, live your life by devotion, bhakti, bhakti say. When you become malang or become like fakir, like shahs, and, and you lead your life with bhakti. Or you can, like a bodhisattva, Bodhisattva of the Jatak Kathas, you can lead a life of karma. Or like Nachiketa, or like Satyakama, you can lead your life by knowledge, Jnana. So Jnana, Karma and Bhakti. Now, these three margas appear to be different. But according to Adi Shankara, in this commentary on Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, he says, Jnana Yukta Karma Hi Bhakti Hai. So he integrated the three. Jnan, yukt, karam, hi bhakti hai. What is bhakti? Bhakti is an action informed by knowledge. Informed by knowledge of truth. What is the truth, right? And uh, in the poetry, as I have already said, there is toggling of rati and bhakti. Toggling of rati, rati and bhakti. Okay, I will now not talk about Shah Hussain. In whatever little time that we still have, I will read out to you lines here and there. And, uh, and then I will explain. And if by the time we are through, uh, very little time left. In fact, one poem I wanted to read completely with, complete. Hmm? And uh, I suppose uh, Inka apne. Danino ji's problem is that he has to give money for a lecture. He need not. He can let me lecture without money. Then I can have another and I can talk about a poem at length. Talk about a length. I don't really need money at this age now. See, because I can't use it. I can't eat much. I can't wear very nice clothes and I can't wear very nice shoes. There is no point because nobody will see. So, uh, I will... Look at this. First, I will follow the, you will I have, you have to bear with me. You see, in order to read, I have to take off my reading glasses. This is the stage where you have to take off your reading glasses to read. So your eyes have become like that. Anyways. <coughs> <coughs> Rabba mere haal da maharam tu, andar tu hai, bahar tu hai, rom rom vich tu. You see, this is the 
becoming one with him with god that you are you are the only protector you are only the guardian of my condition of my whatever i am you are both inside and outside so i am uh, i am pervaded by you pervaded by you pervaded by you tu hai tana tu hai bana you are the warp and you are the woof you are the warp and you are the woof so this is one you get one idea it is a recurrent idea in uh, shah husain that uh, uh, the that the human being need to for for anand for the sake of happiness a human being has to has to try to become one with the supreme energy or force or whatever you like to call it then vanity of human pursuits vanity of human pursuits dil darda ki thi puri nahi dil darda ki thi puri nahi this is very difficult to translate that uh, the pain pain in the heart the pain in the heart completed my experience the pain in the heart completed my experience and now you can all think about it you you even at your young age have all suffered a little pain of the heart off and on so pain of the heart has completed uh, my experience lakh chiro लख करोड़ जिन्हों ने जोड़िया मैं भी चूरी चूरी पठी पई तेरी चिट्ठी चादर चिट्ठी चादर चंगी फकीर की द पीपल हु अमेस्ड करोड़ आई हैव सीन देम आई हैव सीन देम वॉक बेयर फुट आई हैव सीन देम वॉक बेयर फुट आई हैव सीन द वाइट बेडशीट द वाइट बेडशीट ऑफ पीपल become brown with dirt with dust this is how things gradually decline and change kahe husain faqir saida you know the refrain in his poem poetry is either husain faqir or husain rabba rabana husain rabana ya faqir nimana nimana either husain who is very ordinary or either husain who is a mendicant of god or who is a who or is a or or husain who is a only a fakir just a mendicant this is his refrain and he says that uh, all the khalkat all the khalkat all those who lived and left they left they they led only an incomplete life an incomplete life all those who lived and left they left an incomplete incomplete okay then 56 this is uh, like wine tasting you know this is not reading poetry but uh, we are tasting the wine different kinds of wine that's there suniye dekhiye you will be again surprised वेला सिमरन दानी उठ राम दिहाए इट इज मॉर्निंग टाइम गेट अप इट इज टाइम टू रिमेंबर राम नो इट इज शाह हुसैन हुसैन राम ध्यान ध्यान कर राम का ध्यान करने का समय है उठो उठो उठ जाओ हम्म लेटर ऑन आल्सो इन अदर प्रोसी सेज के बिना राम त्याए केड़ी हज है गई अल्लाह अड़िया इफ यू डू नॉट डू नॉट थिंक एंड मेडिटेट ऑन रामा देन योर हज इज नॉट कंप्लीट योर हज इज नॉट कंप्लीट सो यू नो यू हैव दिस इंटीग्रेशन इंटीग्रेशनिस्ट यू नो थिंकिंग द क्लैश बिटवीन ऑलमोस्ट ए सिविलाइजेशनल क्लैश बिटवीन इस्लामिक सॉट and hindu thought many people tried to bridge it particularly in this 15th 16th century even guru nanak even guru nanak ishwar allah e e roop ishwar allah naam apaya kaun 
ਈਸ਼ਵਰ ਅੱਲਾ ਇੱਕ ਰੂਪ ਤੋਂ ਉਪਜਿਆ ਕੌਣ ਭਲੇ ਕੌਣ ਮੰਦੇ both of them are the product of the same light who is inferior who is superior so this attempt was made because of the as you know very very violent conflict between two two ways of life so shah san was one of them who was who was who was doing this and then the transience of life transience of life by the way one by i think the most important fact about uh, shah san is that he is a women's poet his poems are all addressed to girls or to women to ladies and the 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 the, the subject matter of the poems is women's life girls life girls to be more proper you know for him the great bend of life bend of life zindagi jahan badal jati hai is the time when a girl gets married and leaves her father's house and goes to the in-laws this is a great bend according to shah husain in life and a great separation it is also a separation and separation means a suffering separations mean means grief and uh, the pitre grief you know the father's house then becomes only a dream dream even in these days i have known you know girls sometimes who suffer a lot suffer a lot in the in their in-laws families but they don't let their parents know because they don't want to trouble their parents they suffer a lot so you know this suffering uh, to uh, for shah husain human suffering is epitomized epitomized in the suffering of women and particularly suffering of girls you know who separate themselves from one mode of life to another ek din tenu supna thi si galiyan babal waliyan these are first two lines he is addressing a girl he is addressing the girl who is getting married he says one day to you the street the street where your father lives the street will appear only like a dream it will be just a dream one day it will be a dream hmm? and bahut sundar hai the whole poem is very beautiful but then you know if i read everything udd gaye paure phulan de kolon see the imagery a girl going away from her parents from her family from her father mother is like the bhavara the bhavara flying away from the flowers flying away from the flowers and uh, the the fear the hesitance at that moment the kind of inevitability that they experience you see that the uh, inevitability that helplessness of the totality is expressed by him in the other lines in very beautiful words so then let me quickly go to the next this is uh, this is the you know nashwan sansar ye jo sansar hai ye nashwan hai you will say you know maybe some people may say ye bada pessimistic hai no not at all not at all because the word masti the word khel the word anand you know it occurs very frequently in his poetry but that has to be earned one has to earn it because the basic matrix of life is the is of suffering but to emerge from that and play and become intoxicated with joy and have a what is called you know brahmanand anand purest form of anand one has to strive struggle for that struggle for that listen to this poem duniya to mar javna vat na avna i will die out of this life this world and will not come back there will be no return there will be no return 
जो कुछ कीता बुरा पला वट एवर गुड और बैड हैज बिन डन वट एवर गुड और बैड हैज बिन डन दैट ओनली आई विल गेट कीता अपना पावना दिस इज अवर कर्मा थियोरी जो अच्छा बुरा किया है वही मुझे मिलेगा क्योंकि ये दुनिया तो छोड़ के जाना है और मिलेगा क्या यू नो देर वॉज ए पिक्चर सत्य काम फिल्म हिंदी फिल्म अशोक कुमार एंड धर्मेंद्र एंड ऑल दैट धर्मेंद्र इज अ ग्रैंड सन इज डाइंग ऑफ कैंसर एंड द ग्रैंड ओल्ड मैन यू नो विजिट इन द हॉस्पिटल इसे बहुत दर्द पेन हो रहा है तुम्हें इसे ऐसे इसको दर्शन में ऐसा है and then you know he dies and the grandfather takes him to the cremation ground and then at a certain point when the body is put on the put on the ground they break a pot a pitcher after that no relation can go only the body goes you see at that point ashok kumar says in dialogue ashok kumar says tumhare sangi sathi yahan tak hi tumhare sath jayenge your friends and brothers and others can come with you only up to this point ab aage tumhare sath jayega tumhara dharma now only your dharma will accompany you whatever good you have done whatever you have done will go with you so this is the as i said it's a it, all bhakti poetry whichever language you will read you will find the expression of indian basic indian understanding of life दिस वन एंड चलिए कुड़ कुड़ावा करदा माना खाक दे विच, खाक दे विच समावना हाँ देर इज अनदर लाइन हियर वेरी नाइस दैट उजड़ा जाए जंगल जाए बसाना बिकॉज मुस्लिम सो ही विल बी बरे तो जंगल जाए बसाना ये आई विल लीव दिस वर्ल्ड and i will inhabit the forest a jungle kabir you know remember kabir kabir has a uh, uh, second line is that marenge mar jayenge kabir marenge mar jayenge koi na lega naam ujdi jaye basayenge chhod basita gaon chhod basita gaon ujdi this is a recurrent you know because people forget people forget that this mortal life is limited you know and they act as if you remember in mahabharat mahabharat the yaksha prashna when uh, when the brothers want to drink water the yaksha ask questions they don't answer they die then yudhishthir goes and yudhishthir agrees to give the answers then one question is hey, what is the greatest wonder that you notice of life he says the greatest wonder is that we see people dying every day but we believe that we are immortal hum immortal hame kuch nahi hoga that is the great so because people forget so the poets keep reminding that uh, again kabir has another beautiful line mati kahe kumhar se tu kya ronde moe ek din aisa aayega मैं रोन दूंगी तो वन डे आई बिकॉज ये एज ही सेज शाह हुसैन सेज खाक दे समावना खाक में मिट्टी में मिल जाना है दिस इज द ट्रूथ ऑफ लाइफ एंड देन आई थिंक दिनो जी दिनो जी आई थिंक आई एम गोइंग टू लीव दिस यंग चिल्ड्रन अ लिटल डीप थॉटफुल आई थिंक दे शुड नॉट बी दे शुड लाफ but doesn't matter true transcendence is that you know the truth of life and yet you are joyful and enjoy and be happy so i have come to that poem which i want to read so should i not go further with other poems and i will read to you the poem if uh, uh, if the nino ji allows time this is about the shoulder wrap which is prepared with great affection by the aunts and sisters and bhabis of the girl who is getting married and shoulder wrap hmm? salu 
बनाया जाता है पंजाब में बहुत कॉमन है वो बनाया जाता है दिस इज अ पोएम अबाउट सालू सो इट्स इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मोमेंट इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मोमेंट एंड इट इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट गारमेंट इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट गारमेंट फॉर द गर्ल एंड इट एपिटोमाइजेस इट एपिटोमाइजेस फ्रॉम वन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू द मोस्ट मोस्ट ब्यूटिफुल मोमेंट ऑफ अर लाइफ see that salu and then the cavalcade of life the procession of life kya hai how it proceeds very 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 uh, true therefore very very sad very very sad because i think i quoted once last time from hitopadesha separation is the law of life you see separation is the law of life so when it is about separation then uh, but all great literature all great literature all over the world all great poetry is basically deals with human suffering it basically deals with human suffering all great literature great art salu sahaj handalani he is again addressing the girl that ye salu this rap sahaj is with her ease not too not too hasty not too slow not too careless not too careful sahaj there is also a sahaj yoga one of the yogas is called sahaj yoga you know there are some people who whenever they sit wherever they stand they are always at peace with themselves they are always at peace they are in sahaj yoga and there are people you can give them the most comfortable chair you can give them the most comfortable environment they will still remain you know uh, ruffled and uh, uneasy and they you give them a clean place they will put their finger on this and say there is still some dust here you see they this they are the mindset so sahaj salu sahaj handalani it's a very exciting moment but the salu this salu you will use in in a sahaj manner sahaj usko accept karke sahaj tarike se sahaj tarike se salu mera kimti now the girl is talking salu mera kimti my salu is very precious very precious koi dekhan aaiya tarimti some had come some discriminating ladies had come to see me mujhe dekhne aayi thi you understand na dekhne ladki ko dekhne jate hain ha aajkal to aadmi bhi chale jate hain par sambrant familyon mein ab bhi aadmi ladkiyon ko dekhne nahi jate hain to wo ladki dekhna nahi hota hai jo jate hain basically if they go it means to go to say yes ye wo मार्केट नहीं है कि भाई ये तो इसको देखना है उसको दे वही जाते हैं देखने जहां उनको हाँ करनी होती सो सम डिस्क्रिमिनेटिंग लेडीज एट कम देखन आइया त्रिमती गई सी विद एवरी लाइन एवरी लाइन इन दिस पोएम देर इज ए पैसेज ऑफ टाइम पैसेज ऑफ टाइम एंड देर इज ए शिफ्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल कोई देखन आइया त्रिमती सम देखन आइया दी जेंडर मार्कर आइया सेज लेडीज दे हैड कम त्रिमती दे वर वेरी दे वर डिस्क्रिमिनेटिंग वो देखने आई थी देन द नेक्स्ट लाइन इज गई सब सलाए सब की सलाह से फिर मैं गई सो यू नो बिटवीन दे आर कमिंग एंड हर गोइंग ए टाइम एज पास्ट मेनी इवेंट्स एज पास्ट मैरिज एज टेकन प्लेस गई सब की सलाए सब ने कहा ये अच्छा रहे ये अच्छा रिश्ता है यहां यहां ठीक रहेगी यही करेंगे यू सी दैट इज गई सब सलाए एंड देन नेक्स्ट लाइन सी अगेन टाइम एज पास सालू पाया टंगने नो इन द बिगिनिंग व्हेन द गर्ल्स गेट मैरिड फॉर ए मंथ और टू मंथ्स सम थ्री मंथ्स वो चूड़ा भी पहने रहती हैं और नेकलेस भी पहने रहती हैं ऑर्नामेंट्स भी पहने रहती हैं फिर एक टाइम आता है कि जब वो धीरे धीरे चूड़ा उतर जाता है वो भी उतर जाता है 
जब सास फिर चाय बनवाने लग जाती है ना सास चाय बनवाने लग जाती है पहले शुरू में तो नहीं बनवाती फिर बनाने मैं अपनी गर्ल स्टूडेंट्स को कहा करता था कि जब तुम्हारी सास पहली बार कहे चाय बनाओ तो इतनी खराब चाय बनाना उसमें नमक डाल देना ताकि दोबारा वो कहे ना अगर अच्छी चाय बना दी तो सारी उम्र चाय बनाती रहूंगी है तो दे यूज टू एनी वेज गर्ल्स इन अवर बाई द वे इन इंडियन लाइफ आई एम फ्रॉम पंजाब पंजाब में खासकर गर्ल्स डॉटर्स आर हेल्ड वेरी सेक्रेड एंड वेरी प्रेशियस जी नो ब्रदर कैन टच द सिस्टर सिस्टर में थ्रैश इम बट ही कैनॉट कैनॉट हिट बैक सो इसलिए देर इज ए पर्टिकुलर यू नो फॉर्डनेस फॉर डॉटर्स at least in punjab i'm sure this is in most parts of the country most parts of the country in a certain not that there is no suffering suffering is a fact of life suffering to anyone who is helpless anyone who is weak he will suffer she will suffer so suffering is there but then the other thing is also there okay so chuda jaise utar jata hai so the next line pehla hai gayi sab slaye i went with agree everybody everyone's agreement and the next line is salu paya tangne usko hang kar diya samay beet gaya na kafi din to wo roz usko pehen ke ghoomti hogi subah sham ghoomti hogi fir samay beet gaya usko tang diya salu paya tangne gwandan aayi mangne neighboring lady came to ask for it ke ben ji mujhe jana hai zara जरा अपना सालू दे दोगी दिता ना जाए आई एम नॉट एबल टू गिव इट इज स्टिल हेल्ड वेरी डियर दिता ना जाए दिता ना जाए दिता कहीं ना जाए तीन तीन लाइन के इसमें यूनिट्स हैं ग्यारह तैतीस और चार सैतीस लाइन की पोएम है ये बस थर्टी सेवन लाइन देन दिता कहीं ना Salu now she goes into nostalgia. Diya nahi jara, dekh rahi hai. When do you go into nostalgia? When that period of pure happiness comes to an end, and the other experiences begin, then you start thinking. When you start missing, missing your friends, missing your. Uh, now you see why I am saying he is a women's poet because he is so. He is he deals with them in such uh, sensitivity sensitivity. Huh? So now next line is Salu Tur Kashmir da. This cloth, jis pe ye kadai bunai hui, this cloth, it came from Kashmir silk. Somebody brought silk from Kashmir. Ki bhi beti ki shadi ho rahi hai. या भांजी की शादी हो रही है या भतीजी की हो रही है या नाती की हो रही है तो इस रेशम कश्मीर से रेशम रेशम का कपड़ा मंगाएंगे तो सर कितनी प्रेशियस होगी ये लड़की ये आगे जो लाइनें आएंगी उससे आपको लगेगा पता हाउ मच शी मस्ट है बिन दी फोकस ऑफ लव एंड अफेक्शन देन कश्मीर से समबडी केम कोई आया बर्फा चीर दी केम कटिंग थ्रू दिस स्नोज टू ब्रिंग दिस पीस ऑफ सिल्क क्लॉथ दिस पीस ऑफ सिल्क क्लॉथ देन जाना करके राहे जाना करके राहे पर नाउ आई हैव टू मेक माय ओन वे ही केम कटिंग द स्नोज एंड ब्रॉड दिस बट नाउ I have to make my own path, my own way, my own path. Jana ke rai. Rone na lag jana, ladkiyo. Soon ke. <laughs> don't, don't be too moved. Remain detached and listen. Okay. Then, salu tur Gujarat da. You know the dhaga, the threads. With which it was knitted, or kadai hui, the thread came from Gujarat. She is thinking, "How? 
बुआ ने धागे भेजे थे है ना उसने भेजे थे ये याद आनी चीजें कब शुरू होती हैं जब कहीं पे कहीं पे थोड़ा सा एक 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 थोड़ा सा घुन दुख का लग जाता है किसी चीज का कोई सफरिंग शुरू हो जाती है तब नोस्टालजिया होता है इज इट एंड तुर गुजरात द कई मैं पाओ पहली रात द माई फियर ऑफ द वेडिंग नाइट माई फियर ऑफ द वेडिंग नाइट देन कितने टांग बिहाए इन दिस इन सम मैनर इन सम वे इन सम वे इन द गिवन वे गिवन मैनर इट पास इट पास सो इट इज पास समय बीत चुका है सालू तुर मुल्तान दारीगर द कारीगर द क्राफ्ट मैन जिसने कढ़ाई की वो मुल्तान का था तो तुर मुल्तान दिन सी नेक्स्ट लाइन कोई रब दिला दिया जान दी गॉड नोज दट इज इन द हार्ट I will give you two lines which you might have heard. Dil darya, samundro dunge. Hearts are like rivers, deeper than the ocean. Koon dilandi jaane? Who knows the depth of the heart? This is what he is saying. Koi rab dilandiya janda. Koi rab dilandiya jaan. Sutti dilandi si. मुल्तान का था वहां से देखो आए थे अब क्या भगवान ही जानता है कि मेरे दिल में क्या हो रहा है क्या हो रहा है अगली लाइन सुत्ती सौ गले लगाए उस सालू को गले में लगा के सो रही हस्बैंड कहा गया समथिंग एज हैपन्ड ना समथिंग एज हैपन्ड उस सालू को गले लगा के सो रही सालू मेरा आल दा आल बड़ा बड़ी चाहत का सालू बड़ी चाहत का तो ग्रेट आ, क्या कहना चाहिए अफर्मेशन फॉर अफर्मेटिव अफर्मेशन फॉर समन एंड सालू मेरा आल दा कोई महरम नहीं हाल दा नो वन इज देयर who really understands my condition now my condition now koi nahi janta now look at the in seven eight nine lines from that girl who is the center of so much love and affection so much is done for her with such great care and she is so happy she can't even lend the salu and now she is sleeping with the salu she is thinking of the past this this and she says there is no one who really understands my suffering my suffering kis pe aankha jaye to whom should i say kisko kahun i told you in the beginning i have we have known that the girls do not share their problems with their parents very often and it is bad they should they should always share their problems with their parents but they don't and there is a result they suffer a lot suffer a lot silent suffering and kahan pe kisko kahun ja ke salu now the see iske bhi aage kya hua hai next line salu pochan jodya wo jo pahuncha hota hai na ghar mein lagane wala salu pahunche ke sath jud gaya salu se ab pahuncha lag raha hai fall na वट ए फॉल सालू पोछन जोड़िया कोई थी सी कोई था रब का लोड़िया देर वॉज वन बट ही वॉज नीडेड बाई गॉड हर हसबेंड सो ही इज गॉन कोई था रब का लोड़िया ही इज गॉन एंड ग्रेजुअली यू सी इट इज पोछन हो गया होर कोई थी रब का सोड़िया कोई होर किया ना जाए I cannot have another. So much, there was so much love that he was irreplaceable. 
कैनोट हैव एन अर्थ सबे सालू वालिया एंड दिस कंडीशन दिस स्टेट इज नॉट टिपिकल ऑफ मी ओनली असी सबे सालू वालिया ऑल दीज गर्ल्स हू गेट मैरिड एंड एट दिस असी एक बिरखे दिया डालिया वी आर ब्रांचेस ऑफ द सेम ट्री वी आर ब्रांचेस ऑफ द सेम ट्री एक बिरखे दिया डालिया तेरे तूल ना काए यानी कि यू आर द ओनली वन सालू दा रंग जावना ब्यूटीफुल लाइन द कलर ऑफ सालू हैज टू फेड इन फैक्ट कलर ऑफ एवरीथिंग हैज टू फेड द कलर ऑफ लाइफ हैज टू फेड the color of everything has to fade koi koi dar na koi fer na is jag aavna the color of salu has to fade and no one is going to come back to this life but chale kum kum aaye bahut life active lead karke ghoom gham ke chale gaye fir wapas nahi aana hai wapas nahi aana hai सालू मेरा उन्हीं का मेरा जो सालू है ये उन्हीं का है उसी का है उन्हीं का नौ सी दी ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन वो उन्हीं का किन का सालू मेरा उन्हीं का कोई शाम बिंदरा बन सुनी दा नौ दैट लव हैज बिन ट्रांसम्यूटेड यू नो इन टू लव फॉर शाम बिंदरा बन सुनी ये सालू अब उसका है शाम बिंदरा बन नो दिस इज ए एनलार्जमेंट एक्सपेंशन एक्सपेंशन शाम बिंदरा बन सुनी जाना बिखड़ राहे अलग रास्ते पे जाना है अलग रास्ते पे जाना है कहे हुसैन गदाइया कोई रात जंगल बिच आई है दिस नाइट हैज नो कम इन ए फॉरेस्ट कोई रब डाडा बे पर गॉड इज रियली केयरलेस फिनिश वॉट डू यू थिंक आई हैव ए फर्म कन्विक्शन दाइंड ऑफ लेक्सेस स्मॉल लाइन तीन तीन चार चार शब्दों की द लेक्सेस इन रिप्लेसेबल द थॉट सो डीप and the praxis in the poem the movement with every line there is passage of time and in the intervening space there is so much of experience that you can reconstruct if he had written today and in english he would have won a nobel prize isn't it the kind of depth and the kind of this thing that he has so uh i think uh, then you know ji kind of yes i will not there are so much to read in him so much to read in him but well, let me tell you you can get this in devnagari this shah husain is available online in devnagari also and if you read in devnagari you will understand it because the words are not very different vocabulary is the same vocabulary only the script is the proper now what else what else about shah husain nothing except that even today of all the, up to 5 600 years he is perhaps among the most perhaps the most popular poet singer of punjab all punjab pakistan india everybody i have myself spoken three times about him you know and uh, every time it is incomplete because you cannot read all the other things all the other beautiful things that are there but this poem is superb with every line there is a quantum leap in experience and there is a passage of time passage of time right i hope you appreciate yes that this is a typical bhakti this is a typical indian literature poem and you will get such poems in all literatures of all indian languages in north east south west everywhere everywhere you will get 
and that is the landscape of india literary landscape this philosophy these states of being these feelings this basic uh, human human uh, you know emotionality emotionality you know because you know in the west they make a distinction between reason and emotion and they at least plato thought that emotions are not good they should be kept in check and there is a split personality there and uh, it is when the metaphysical poets in english literature they try to combine reason and emotion hmm? and but in india reason and emotion are not separate not separate a a a fine human emotion a fine human emotion is a product of deep intellection deep intellection bahut gehri chintan ke baad ek sundar bhav इंसान में बनता है सुंदर भाव ये ऑर्डिनरी भाव तो बड़ी जल्दी बन जाते हैं है, डिजायर है एंगर है ये बट यू नो टू 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 हैव दैट द डिविनिटी अबाउट द इमोशन दैट इज ए प्रोडक्ट ऑफ ग्रेट इंटेलेक्शन देर इज नो सेपरेशन बिटवीन इमोशन एंड रीजन वे थैंक यू वेरी मच Abhiji, thank you very much. I would like to ask you a very quick question, very brief about Shah Hussain, because you have not mentioned the response from, let us say, Sikhism to him. And in fact, his tomb is in Lahore, near Lahore, if I remember well. And I read somewhere that Maharaja Ranjit Singh used to lead a procession to his tomb. of hindus muslims sikhs thousands of sikhs mm -hmm. and that became in due course it became a big festival in fact in, in yes it was Africa. it was a, it was a fest it was celebrated yes so how was During. how was it perceived was it did it make any difference that his audience was was hindu or a muslim no or no 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 there was no difference in fact everybody was his audience yes. even today everybody is his audience and uh, people have traced that many of uh, his sentences huh the sayings have echoes in guru granth sahib also exactly and uh, at that time the difference between sikh and hindu was not there yeah they, that difference was not made and uh, guru granth sahib itself is a is a granth of vaishnava dharma you see and uh, just a rigveda is the first intellectual text of uh, of uh, sanatan dharma guru granth sahib is the latest latest intellectual text of sanatan dharma you see the rigveda was a collection of sayings of wise people of the time rishis and it was in composed in meter chand Guru Granth Sahib also is a collection of say sayings of the wise people of 16th, 15th century of India. There are ten bhaktas. Guru no, Namdev is there, Kabir is there. You know, Guru Granth Sahib and the wise people of India. And it is also in meter. It is in ragas. So Rig Veda has ten mandalas. Guru Granth Sahib has ten gurus. Rig Veda is a is a sangraha granth collection. Rigved the Guru Granth Sahib is a collection that was a collection of the wisdom of the wise people in five thousand years ago. This is the wisdom of the wise people of India in the fourteen, fifteen, sixteen century. So, so this great poet is is still completely. He's completely part of the stream. You see, look at him later on. I mean, the way he talks about Sham, Bindraban, Sunida, or Rama. Huh? and he is a muslim and he has lot of there is lot of he talks about ayat also he talks about things also but you know he has transcended all this yes he has transcended all this and uh, there is a unity of human self which uh, which he is keenly aware of and deeply aware of so i think it is a beautiful note to close on thank you and uh, kapil ji how do we thank you for this uh, lived by not story. thanking me <laughs> <laughs> you are congratulated as you say he needs no introduction 
I need no thanking. So we will not thank you, but we are grateful for this uh, lived experience of, of Indian literature, its, its uh, spirit, its message, and, and, and its current uh, living experience that we must uh, reconnect to. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Namaskar, Jeeter, Khushro, or Kaskar, Jo Betia Betiana, Dukine Hunahe, Kushonahe. But I'm Dicky, you have a poet who sings only about you. All your ek or poem, hai Indian literature, ne. Gatha Sata Sai, first century AD ki, first century AD, seven hundred quatrains, each about women, their different moods. There are different joys, there are sufferings. Gatha Satsai. Gatha Satsai. And there is another text. These are stories. Teri Gatha. These are stories written by lady monks, Buddhist monks. So, jab aapko feminist theory wale bataye na, ke India me women ko bada ignore kiya jata hai, to unko bataye ga ke ye teen granth hai, me west se bhi bata dijiye agar ho haan bhi koi ho to. एक एनी वन कोई ऐसा पोएट हो कोई ऐसा ग्रंथ हो कि सात अठाई सौ लाइने पोएट्री की सेवन हंड्रेड क्वार्टरें सेवन हंड्रेड नॉनसेज ऑफ ए वूमेन्स लाइफ गाथा सत्ती एंड इट हैज बीन ट्रांसलेटेड इन प्राकृत इट वाज ए प्राकृत पोएम बट इट हैज बीन ट्रांसलेटेड इनटू हिंदी पढ़िएगा ये चीजें पढ़िएगा पर इनको पढ़िएगा, love it, okay, thank you so much, thank you, नमस्ते